Hi friends, welcome back to Asana with Samantha. I am Sam, I'm so glad that you're here again and it is day three of our Fit and Focus Through the Holidays Challenge. As always, keep in mind that I'm not there with you, so please be present in your body, take care of yourself, and make sure that you are working within the bounds of your body's capabilities. So, as I was preparing this challenge, I thought to myself, what is something that a lot of people struggle with during the holidays? What is something that I struggle with a lot during the holidays? And I think that having a sense of balance is one of those things. Not necessarily physically, but in terms of overloading your plate, right? I kind of have a tendency to feel like I need to do everything, like, oh, it's Christmas time, I need to take my kids here, and I need to do all of that crap, and anyway, it gets overwhelming, and I'm sure I'm not the only person with that problem. So, today I thought that we could kind of do a metaphor type of practice. So when you're trying to physically balance, there are three things that you can focus on to try to assist in this particular endeavor. The first one is rooting down and having a solid foundation. The second is having a focal point, a very clear focal point. And the third is softening around your core and your grounding point. So taking that into account, translating from physical practice to off the mat in our daily lives, if you can kind of narrow down your life or your holiday practice to this is what I want my focal point to be, this is where I want to be grounding down, then you can kind of soften the rest of yourself around that. So for example, if my purpose this holiday season is to try to help others, then before I overload my list of things to do, I can ask myself, does this assist me in helping others or is it just kind of getting in the way? And then you can filter out that way. So that's just my two cents. You can choose to take it or leave it. But either way, today that's what we're going to be practicing physically as we practice with the balance. So we're gonna start in a standing position today. And I want you to start at the top of your mat but I'm gonna start right here just so that you can see what I am doing. So, at the top of your mat, I want you to ground down through the points of your feet. If you feel like you need to have a wider stance to give you a little bit extra balance, that's totally fine. Or you can bring your feet closer together. It's what works best for you. Now, in your feet, we have four corners. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, right, considering the shape of your feet, but so I'm just gonna hold my foot up to you. There's corner one, corner two, corner three, corner four. So as you are standing, I want you to imagine all of these four corners making contact with your mat and grounding down. So again, grounding down through the four corners of your feet, I want you to try to lift your arches. Now I know that that sounds kind of ridiculous, but as you press down through all four of those corners, your arch will naturally start to lift. See how I did that? So it lifts by grounding down through those four corners. Now keeping your arches lifted, I want you to pick up all of your toes, okay? Pick up all your toes and spread them wide as you can. And then place down just your big toe. <laughs> and then see if you can get each toe down one at a time. Now your feet might look kind of wonky, but this creates a sturdier base. So keep your feet grounded down here. I'm just gonna move to the top of my mat. Now in this position, I want you to close off the eyes simply to, to challenge yourself. Now you don't have the focal point and you are just standing still but you can probably feel how having that solid base and that solid foundation can really help stabilize you even without that focal point. You can open the eyes. We're gonna inhale, arms come up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, step or jump back into a high plank. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now take a moment here. You can pedal out through the feet. This is our first downward facing dog. So you can establish the posture. Again, take a nice deep bend of the knees if you'd like. Don't worry about how close your heels are getting towards the ground. Just draw them in that general direction. 
Spine is extending. Sit bones are growing towards the ceiling. All right, we'll step or jump the hands to the feet. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands down through heart center. Do that one more time. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, plant the hands, step or jump back to high plank. You can always lower down through the knees. Inhale, exhale down through chaturanga. Draw those hands towards you. Upward dog or cobra. Downward dog. Again, take a moment. This will be a resting posture for a moment. Because <laughs> we just finished our two sun eights. So if you've been following me for a while, you probably know what's coming next. A couple of sun bees. All right, step forward or jump. <laughs> Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up to stand. Exhale, hands down through heart center. All right. So for our sun bees, I'm gonna add in a little bit of a challenge for you. So inhale, come into chair position, and we're gonna come up onto the toes. If this feels like it's too much for you, just stay in that regular chair position. All right, exhale, release the feet, forward fold. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, step or jump back, high plank, lower down, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the right leg, plant the foot between the hands, angle that back foot 45 degrees. Inhale, come up to warrior one. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, high plank, vinyasa, into down dog. Again, lifting from the inner thigh, left leg comes up, plant that hand between the, plant that foot between the hands, angle that back foot, a 45 degree angle, inhale, warrior one. Exhale, straight back down, extend the leg, vinyasa, Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Whew. Just building a little bit of heat. Jump start your morning if you're doing this in the morning. <laughs> All right, on an inhale, we'll step or jump forward to the hands. Come up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, we're gonna come back up to that chair position. Add in the tiptoes, hold here. Make sure you're sticking your bum back, not your knees forward. Come up to stand, release the feet down. Good job. It's a, it's a tough one holding that chair position with the tiptoes. So, good work. All right, we're gonna do that one more time. Inhale, chair position, add in the tiptoes. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, create some space. Exhale, plant the hands. Step or jump back. Lower down through chaturanga. Upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. We take a moment here to catch your breath if you lost it. All right, again, lifting from the inner thigh. Right leg comes up. Plant the hand between the feet. We'll angle that back foot and come up into warrior one. Now pivot the back foot. So we're in a high lunge. And then find a focal point on the wall in front of you and lift up that right foot up to tiptoes. We are on tiptoes, both feet. Hold that balance. And again, Find the points of your body that are connected to the mat. Ground down through them, and then allow the rest of the body to 
soften around it and relax. Okay, release that front foot. And now slowly, slowly with care, we're going to lift that back leg up and come into a warrior three position. Again, keep in mind that the more that you ground down through that standing foot, the easier it will be to keep your balance. Now slowly, slowly with care and without releasing the foot to the ground, bring that left foot forward into a standing balance with your knee up. And we'll move back to warrior three and then back forward again, two more times. So with care, Again, use all four corners of that standing foot. Spread through the toes again. If you need a little extra support, warrior three. Straight away, slow, slow. It's like you're a teeter-totter on top of that standing leg. Knee comes forward. Last time, back to warrior three. Teeter-totter forward. So careful. <laughs> and then teeter totter again. Bring that knee forward. It's okay to be wobbly. We'll release that foot down. Shake out your right foot. Whew. All right. Now, bringing your left foot up again, so we're putting a little bit more stress on that right ankle so that we are stabilizing and strengthening it. Bring your left foot up to your inner thigh. So tree position. Now in this position, you can have it up on your thigh or down on your ankle, never on your knee joint. Do not, do not ever compromise your knee joints. So you'll take your variation, place it wherever works for you. Again, find your focal point on the wall to assist you. And we'll hold tree. Now, when I was in school, we did a little experiment in tree pose with pushing each other over <laughs> while we were standing in tree pose. It wasn't until we learned how to root down through the grounding points and then soften the rest of the body around it that we weren't as easily knocked over anymore. It was amazing. So just take a moment to see if you can soften the rest of your body and just sit comfortably in this position. We'll bring that leg behind us for a quad stretch. And in this position, instead of just your typical quad stretch, I want you to really kick your leg back into that hand. So you really come into more of like a dancer. You can bring that front arm forward, like a bow and arrow type of variation. We'll slowly, slowly release that foot down. You can shake out through that right foot. Do a jig if you need to, run in place. Now it's a lot of stress on one ankle. <laughs> okay, and we'll step back into our warrior one again. Whew, arms up. And then exhale. We'll finish that 7D. Vinyasa down. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lifting from the inner thigh, left leg comes up. Plant it between the hands. Turn that back foot to a 45 degree angle. Come on up. For warrior one. Now we'll pivot that back foot into a high lunge. Again, find your focal point on the wall in front of you. Come up to tiptoes. Now left foot. Hold here. If your toes are more widely spread, it will give you more of a base. Release that foot down. And again, with care, slowly coming up to that Warrior three balance. Hold here. And slowly, 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 without releasing the foot to the floor, come up into that standing balance with the knee up. Good work. All right, we're gonna move back and forth between these two again, two times. So back to warrior three. Imagine someone's pulling your heel back Drawing your head forward with a string. And then with care, slowly. <laughs> Don't cheat. Bring the knee up in front of you. Last time. 
Moving into warrior three. Just let that teeter totter. And then tilt back. It's okay if you lose your balance. Clearly, I'm losing mine as well. So you're not alone. If your foot touches the floor, don't kick yourself. Just try again. All right. We'll release that down for a moment. You can shake out your left foot. And now we'll come into tree position on this leg. So bringing that right foot to your thigh or to your shin and then soften. Try not to focus on like flexing all of your muscles to like stay as tense as you possibly can because if you do that, then again, you're gonna lose the stability. You're focusing on the outside, the outer muscles of your body. But if you just focus on the grounding point and your core and then soften all of the outside, you could be like, super wiggly and you'll be okay. <laughs> All right, now we'll come into that uh, quad stretch. And again, kick your foot back into that hand and come forward into a dancer. Again, it does not matter how deep you can get into this position. It's about, whoo! <laughs> it's about the balance. Okay, we'll release that. You can drop your foot down to the ground. Shake out through that left leg again. Come on, dance. You can have to just wiggle it out. All right, and we will step back with care into our warrior one. <laughs> Exhale, frame the foot. Step back to high plank. Vinyasa. Back into down or facing dog. Good job. Hmm. Balance is something that I personally struggle with, and so I feel like I need to work on it on almost a daily basis. So practices like this really help people like me. So if you're like me, I hope that you're benefiting from this as well. All right, and then inhale, step or jump forward, come up halfway, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, back to that chair position. Last time. Up to the tiptoes. You got this. Last time. Take an extra breath. See if you can get even deeper. Whoop. Stick your buns back. Exhale. Release down. Good work. It's tough stuff. All right. Once again, come up to the tiptoes. Arms come up tall. We're just going to slowly, slowly staying on the tiptoes, on the tiptoes all the way down. We're going to come down to a crouch. You can bring your hands down to heart center. Hold here. We'll go up again. Inhale, all the way up to stand. And then exhale, down to your crouch. Again, focal points on the walls. And your grounding points in your toes Ooh, can be really helpful. Now let's do that one more time. Inhale, all the way up to stand. And exhale, back down into your crouch. Beautiful, good job. You can come down to your bum. And extend the legs out long. Give them a nice little shake out. They've been working super hard. The legs and the feet are our foundation, so it's okay to have them work hard when you're practicing these things. If you want to give them a pat, that helps too. <laughs> All right, peel the flesh from the sit bones so that you are actually rooting down into the mat. We'll take an inhale to grow tall, and as you exhale, forward fold. So again, in these forward folds, you want to Grow tall as well as root down through these sit bones at the same time. So your spine is long, bringing your tummy to your thighs, not your forehead to your shins. And breathe, you will not be on your tiptoes anymore today, <laughs> at least not on my account. Hmm. 
inhale, come up. We'll cross the right foot or the left leg. Place your right hand behind you as a kickstand. We'll inhale to extend tall and exhale. You can either hug the knee or you can use it as a lever to get a little deeper into that twist. So with every inhale, grow taller. Every exhale, see if you can draw just a little bit deeper. Bring the gaze over that back shoulder towards the back of the room. A little deeper. Inhale to unwind. Switch the legs. So left leg crosses over the right. Left hand comes behind you as a kickstand. We'll inhale to extend up and exhale to twist. Again, bringing that gaze over the back shoulder. Your right toes should be pointed up towards the sky. Don't let them flop. I'll still keep those legs engaged. Okay, we'll release that. And I'm gonna turn to face you. We're gonna come into Baddha Konasana. So soles of the feet are together. We're going, to, we're going to pull that diamond in as close as we can to start. <laughs> so again, it does not matter how close you can get them to your body. We're all in different bodies. So just work within your own. We'll inhale to extend tall and exhale. Forward fold. Spine is straight and long. So always rooting and rising, same time. All right, we're gonna extend our diamond a little bit wider, so just draw your feet a little bit further forward. This time as you exhale, feel free to round the spine. So you can just bring your head towards your feet. So inhale and exhale. Enjoy rounding your spine. If you want, you can use your elbows to put a little extra pressure on your knees to open through the hips a little bit wider. You can just relax. body up. We're going to come into shoelace. So left leg on the bottom, right leg on top. And just stack one knee on top of the other. If this is uncomfortable for you, you can come into kind of a box shape or you can always try pressing your knees in towards each other. Inhale to grow tall. Exhale, forward fold. Spine is straight again. So you should be feeling this in your glutes and in your abductors on the outsides of your legs. It feels really nice after standing on your legs for so long. Inhale to come back up. We're just gonna reverse our legs. So left leg is on top now. Again, if you need to switch that box position or press your knees together, feel free to do so. Inhale to grow tall, exhale, forward fold. Spine is long, grow. Ground and grow, root and rise. We'll just say them again and again so they get stuck in your head, right? All right, we'll inhale to come back up. We'll just unwind. All right, now we'll turn to the side. Give yourself a little bit of a hug. Say good job. 
You did it so far. And then pick up your toes to balance on your sit bones. A little bit more mellow, still working with the balance. And again, you can feel those grounding points through your sit bones and then soften the rest of your body around it. You can just kind of chill here, right? <sighs> All right, and now we're gonna do something a little bit fun. <laughs> At least it's something that it's kind of difficult to do, but it's fun to try, right? It's fun to try new things. So you can watch me first, just hang out in your sit bone balance, and I'll show you what we're gonna do. So we'll rock and roll, okay? Back and forth. And as you come up, see if you can use enough momentum to come up to one foot, grab hold of that foot, and balance, and then roll back. And up, switch feet. <laughs> see how it felt? Let's see if you can balance. All right? We'll do that three times on each side. So you should still be in your little sit bone balance, right? We'll try to rock and roll. So I'm gonna give you an opportunity to just try that three times on each side. You can do it at your own pace. If you make it, pat yourself on the back. If you don't make it, be kind to yourself, try again. This is just for fun, right? It's rewarding when you put it. It's kind of fun even when you don't, right? It's silly to fall over. <sighs> so even if you can make it every once in a while, it doesn't guarantee you'll be able to every single time, right? If you end up using your hands, that's cool too. Whoop. Okay. Well, that was fun. <laughs> All right. Let's release our feet and peel the body down somewhat slowly. At least peel down with control. It doesn't have to be super slowly, ab crunch style. Now, window wipe the legs. Release some of that tension in your back. Hmm. So important to add a little bit of play into every practice. You gotta keep it fun, right? Just like I was talking about with our exercise and keeping it varied, it's so important to make exercise play. That's how our children do it. And that's why they're so stinking fit. It's because they enjoy doing it. So that's what we need to do too, right? Ooh, okay. All right, we're just gonna come into Shavasana. So if you'd like, you can do the traditional Shavasana with your legs extended long, or where you bring your feet to the width of your mat, make sure your shoulder blades are tucked under your body, palms face up, or you can bring them to the belly to feel the breath. Whichever variation you would like to take today. Close off the eyes. And again, we've been practicing this theme of grounding and softening. We can apply this in our Shavasana as well. There's a lot more in contact with the earth, but you can still bring your focus to each and every point that is connected to the earth. Sink down into it and allow the rest of your body to simply soften around it. Again, these principles can be applied in any way that is useful to you. If you're feeling overwhelmed, not just during the holidays, but just in life, you can come back to this principle. What is important to me? What's the purpose? What's the point? And then you can make your decisions and whittle down what is essential to you. If we filter out all of the non-essential things, then we are more able to be present and focus on and enjoy the things that we choose to do and the moments we choose to be in. Be 
begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. Bring your presence back to the body. And then in your own time, rolling to whichever side feels most comfortable to you today. And coming up to comfortable seated position. Eyes remain closed. And you can just rest the hands in the lap. Again, take a moment to check in with your body, check in with your mind, check in with the breath. Hands to heart center, blink open the eyes. Namaste. Thank you so much for flowing with me again today. I hope that that was of use to you. As always, please, as we are going through this challenge, support us as a community. Take a picture of yourself doing something awesome that makes you feel happy today and uh, or something simple that makes you feel happy today. If it's a brownie that you get to enjoy today and you take a picture of that, awesome, I wanna see it. So <laughs> just post it on Instagram and use the hashtag fit and focused holiday. I'll put it in the description below. Thank you again so much for flowing with me today and I will see you tomorrow. Have a swell day.